G'day and welcome to the channel. I'm here with fellow YouTuber Jan Wagner. Hey. We're going to be recording our Ask Us Anything. So on my YouTube channel, I just reached out to my lovely audience to see if you had any questions. So Jan's agreed to have a chat, which is great. So thanks for that. Sure. Be sure to check out Jan's channel if you haven't already. Lots of good videos on there, that's for sure. All right, so the first question that I got was from Mickey Goodman, and he asked, how did our bromance start? When did it start? The first time I came across your name, I think, was ages ago on this yeah. internet forum called Feathers and Folders. When you, in your old house, you just put out some water or something, and you're photographing these yellow tufted honey. Yeah, I'm like, oh, right. that would be a nice bird to <laughs> photograph. And on then we met the first time when you moved to Wangaratta on your big property. In Three years ago, I think. Yeah, so we've known each other for what? Well, we've known of each other for about 10 years. I knew your photos because they're just so amazing. I think every <laughs> bird photographer knows who you are. So, um, yeah, I remember reaching out to you then. But, yeah, we moved a lot closer. So we're only about three hours apart now. Mm. Before it was uh, seven hours or something like that so or more. And we seem to be enjoying each other's company been, so been far. Been good so far. Had a few trips. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All righty. Um, so this one's probably more for you. This, I think his name's Shoot Stenbra, I think. <laughs> um, he's asked uh, just for some tips on photographing small forest birds or small bush birds. So how do you go about getting your shots? Well, I think, first of all, you have to find a spot where you know that the birds are. Mm -hmm. And personally, I like to set up on the way or somewhere where I know that the birds will come across, for instance, like... Those robins, sometimes you see them just hopping from like post to post, even on the car park, yeah. for instance. So yep. you could put a little perch there. Sometimes you can put a little worm on top or something like that. So I always like to have find the birds and then attract them to a certain spots so that I can kind of control a little bit the look of my image. I can set up with a nice background because if you consistently want to get outstanding images, then I think it's important that you plan and kind of control as much as you can because it will just give you a much higher keeper rate i guess the percentage of getting a bird is lower but if you get the bird then usually you get a really nice image out of it so that's I think yeah I've, I've noticed that for sure like i've been out with you and it, there's a lot of work that goes into it a lot of time a lot of planning so you visit lots of sites get all the information find out where these birds are go to them figure it out and it can take multiple attempts as well. So it's not like you just turn up to a location and get the shot. Often there's a lot of background work. So I think a lot of people ask these questions, oh, how do I get these birds? Because they walk around and they're in the middle of the bush and it can be quite difficult. So, yeah, that's a good, some good advice there is just to do a lot of planning. Yeah. And, yeah, I think the planning part is actually very, very important. And I think a lot of people underestimate it. I'm like, if you actually know there's a spot where these birds will show up, the chances of getting the shots are much greater, obviously. Yep, 100%. All right, so this next question is a really good one. It's from Bird Dude. He says, is wildlife photography your full-time job? Um, and also, do you have any tips for other people making wildlife photography videos? Thanks for all your amazing content. So is wildlife photography your full-time job? It's almost my full-time job. It's certainly the job where I spent most of my time on. Yeah. I do shoot a little bit of high-end real estate on the side, but... That's kind of my background. I used to run a whole photography team at a big real estate photography company. And I actually quit there because I didn't have any time anymore to do the wildlife stuff mm -hmm. or the bird stuff. So I really wanted to make a change. So I focused on YouTube, started to make videos on YouTube and started to do things like my masterclass. Long term, I'm planning to basically do only the wildlife and bird mm -hmm. stuff. But for now, it's just kind of easy to do both. Yeah, I mean, for me, um, personally, I've got a day job. So I still work. I need to pay the bills, as you say. Um, YouTube for me has been more of a hobby, I suppose. Um, so I do get a little bit of revenue from the ads and different things, but I haven't monetized it as well as I could and probably should. Maybe in the future, I'll look at that. It would be awesome to do this full time, but at the moment, I still need to do my day job. For anyone that wants to get into YouTube and taking videos, I guess you just have to do it for the right reasons. I wouldn't be starting off making videos to make lots of money because it just won't happen. It, it has to take a lot of time for you to build an audience and to do all those things. So I wouldn't be giving up your day job to start YouTube and you have to be passionate about it and enjoy it. For us, I think we've done fairly well because we both love taking photos of birds. We love helping people and I think that's why our channels are doing pretty well. And I think it's also important though that you actually just get out there and do it because mm -hmm. you can probably overthink it as well. Greg Wilson has asked, how do you carry all your photography gear, video gear, um, when you're taking a YouTube video? And what do you do? How do you do the, your YouTube video, I guess? I 
ask myself that question <laughs> as well sometimes. And it's not easy anymore. So often we are obviously in spots where we can park our car quite close, then mm. it's easier. Or have a nice friend. Like on my last video, on my last trip, I had someone who didn't mind carrying a couple tripods for me. So that was very Shout helpful. Shout out to Gerard. Thanks, Thanks Gerard. Gerard. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, it's becoming a challenge. I'm actually just looking into getting maybe another one or two backpacks. So I have a dedicated uh, backpack for all my video gear, one for my camera gear and one for maybe my big lens or something. Because at the moment I have way too many small bags and way too many things flying through the car. So I just <laughs> stuff everything in my pockets and start wandering off. And then I probably forgot some filter in the car yeah. or the microphone or something like that. So <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a challenge for me as well. Um, I don't have quite as much gear, but just the planning and, you know, doing the piece to camera so you've got a couple of cameras filming you and even planning YouTube. So if we just talk about YouTube uh, videos that we take, you know, there's quite a bit of planning that goes into it. So for me personally, you know, for a, a tutorial type one where I'm, I'll am i actually write a script, so have an idea, <clears throat> write a script, that takes some time. And then, you know, I'll do the filming part. The filming part's actually the quickest part, you know, <laughs> talking to the camera. I have to repeat myself a few times. For but, sure. But it's probably an hour or two to, to do the filming. And then it's the editing that just takes forever. So for me to edit uh, a video, one of those longer videos, can be anywhere from, I don't know, maybe eight to 20 hours, something like that. It's a long time. Days at a time because you can't often do it in one go. No. And then you end up doing four, five, six days in a row, you're just editing the one video. And then there's these little B-roll snippets you just throw in here and there. Or like I have a really cool drone shot, but I've actually been flying around the drone for like 45 minutes that day, getting five seconds of footage yeah. for the start of the video. So there's a lot of things that you don't really see that go on. And the B-roll is especially hard, especially mm. if you're by yourself, because yeah. you want to show yourself in the setting, you want to show yourself shooting, you want to show the bird. So there's a lot of different cameras or camera angles that you have to get. And you can either set up a lot of different cameras, but that's always a bit difficult as well. Especially then, if the bird doesn't do what you want it to, or you don't get a photo. Well, then it's even more annoying. So sometimes we might actually get the bird first and yeah. then get the rest. But <laughs> yeah, for sure. It, it, it's a real challenge. Sometimes I get so engrossed in taking the photos of the birds, I'm, I forget about the B-roll and I forget about doing all the filming and I think, oh, yeah, I've got these photos, I need to do some B-roll. So now it's a real challenge, that's for sure. No, you, as you say, you definitely have to have a script in your head the whole time, the whole day. It's mm. like, I needed the drone, I need the car driving, I somehow need the car driving from behind, and then I wanted a shot of me standing amongst these trees. And this is what brings it all together in the end, but also what makes it hard. But mm. if you don't think of it all the time you're probably just going to come home and then you're missing a shot which then makes the editing almost impossible yeah no i need to do more on that for sure <laughs> oh we've kind of answered this question already but ed smiley was just asking how do we find our spots um and he said it seems like many of your spots appear to be just where the birds are and obviously we answered that um but that's actually what we're trying to find the spots where the birds yeah, are yeah. it sounds kind of silly but that's really what we invest a lot of time yeah, in. we don't go to a lot of different places and then look for the birds. We try to actually find a place like your property or there's yep. another property that I have where I filmed that video purged where I just know there's birds or someone has been putting out water for birds for many, many years. So I try to make contact with them, explain them what we would want to do, film a video mm -hmm. or whatever. And then you can find really good birds in crazy spots. Like there's a caravan park around yeah. that has these turquoise parrots coming into water and they're very difficult to get anywhere else. So yeah. sometimes it's the most crazy little water fountain that has amazing birds coming in. And so I think a lot of it is finding these spots because if the birds are actually coming into a certain spot, you can set up and you just have to wait. Mm, so yeah. you don't have to do any chasing or anything. The birds are used to coming to this spot and you yeah. set up and you get the shots, hopefully. All right, so Scott Lee's got a really good question. Has Jan talked you into an R5 yet? <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> well, I don't think you are necessarily reluctant you're not refusing to get one. I think it's more a mix of things where the R6 does a really good job for you and you might be better off getting this lens, which you actually bought, was it today? Yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's just some of the considerations. I think all of you will experience that as well, that we would all want to have a mm. lot more gear really, but yeah. sometimes you just have to make choices of what you want or what's 
what gets your head the most because mm. the upgrade from your R6 from your R6 to an R5 wouldn't really change dramatically no. what you do right now yeah yeah no that, that's my reason so you know it's more of a financial thing for me because in Australia the R5 what five and a half six grand or something yes, like that something like six probably yeah. six grand so it's quite a lot of money and um, you know the R6 was a lot more affordable I do wish I had an R5 <laughs> <laughs> so you know it's just a much better camera but the R6 is doing me fine at the moment it's definitely growing on me yeah and I've decided to invest in the lens because I'll have this lens for, for for a long time but at the moment I'm happy with my R6 um, but I'll let you touch it sometimes. Yeah, yeah I, I do get to play with yarns, which is good. So he's got two of them. So um, I'm more than happy to play with that one for sure. Christopher Johnson's asked, what's your preferred workflow look like when picking out great images? So how do you even, so now with your R5, you're shooting in electronic. So you're getting 20 frames per second. How do you even pick which ones are good or which ones to keep? Well... I had to force myself to be a bit more ruthless with deleting images simply because the R5 files are quite big and last two trips I ended up with like over one terabyte of video <laughs> and images. So there's no ultra fast way. I use fast on image viewer because it's for me the fastest program there is mm -hmm. to scroll through the images and also look at them at 100% because I do want to know if I keep an image that it's also critically sharp. And so when I use fast on imagery, I just load the images from the day in there and there's one function where I can just mark an image. Mm -hmm. And so I mark all the ones that I want to keep. And then afterwards I zoom out and I can see all the ones that are not marked. So I select all those, delete them all. And yeah. overall, I think I'm always looking for that perfect pulse and it's typically for me it would be a bird that has like a nice upright pulse and it's showing something like if it's a cockatoo it has the crest up or mm -hmm. wings open something like that and then ideally probably the tail on this side of the perch and just looking really nicely but I probably always keep like one of each in a way like yeah. I'd if it's a really good scene I might even keep five or six very similar images just for no reason, really. I just feel bad <laughs> deleting really good images. I, I, I'll just spring this on you. So I'll just find it. I took some images of a Scarlet Robin for my review of the Tamron 150 to 600. I've taken four Scarlet Robin images and I just, I'll just i share them with everyone else just to have a look through them and see which one strikes you the, the most. Well, probably the second one. Okay, yep. First one... It's nice, but it looks like the bird only has one leg. <laughs> yeah, it's a blending in. And yep, good one. the background is a little bit more... It's a bit bright behind the bird. It's a nice pulse, but something didn't... I think something about the legs yep. confuses me a bit. Yeah. I definitely like the pulse in the second one. That's just what I talked about before as well with the yep. tail on this side of the perch. Although with robins, it's always a little bit tricky because they have all their color on the chest. Yeah, so sure. you don't want to have it facing too far away from you, but I still think it kind of works in yep. this case. Yeah. Third one is nice, but I feel like it's almost a little bit too front on and the tail, yep. especially on the robins with the uh, white, it becomes quite sort of skinny looking. And then yep. personally, I'm just not a fan of like, frilly feathers sticking out yeah, on okay. the side yep. so i think this shows the chest really well but i would love to see a tiny bit more of the wing yeah and then the last one is really nice it's just probably just the editing i think the eye looks a little bit too bright or something okay. yep but that's a really nice shot but it's a little bit small but it kind of still works so this would be my second pick yeah that would All probably right. be my first pick but you can probably look at an image and um you almost have an instant feeling of whether it's the right one or not so definitely yeah, i'm either. actually probably looking for the shot and i know exactly what i want the shot to look like yeah so then i fairly quickly go through all my images and yep. i don't look at every image at 100 percent. i just look at the ones that i want to keep at 100 percent. yeah but yeah i'm certainly looking for something so there's a lot of shots where i just know now it's not yep. not going to work for me but yep. then when i see it i see it and i know yeah and i guess composition works the same doesn't it you, you Feel, get a feel for what you like and it's hard yes. to articulate why you like it you just do and the more you develop this sort of vision of what works and what doesn't work the easier it becomes to go through large amount of images sure. as well figuring out what you like what makes a great image for you like what image speaks to you emotionally i mm. know exactly when I see it, I see it, and it creates yeah, like yeah, a feeling. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's how I usually yeah. go through it quickly. Yeah, sounds good. I'm the same. Sometimes I'll look at an image and I like it. 
because I like it. Yeah. You know, someone else might not particularly like it, but at the end of the day, photography, we do it for ourselves. Um, Elliot asks the dream location anywhere in the world that you want to go. Is there anywhere you really want to go that you haven't been yet? I always find St. Paul Island in the middle of the Bering Sea quite uh. fascinating with all those <laughs> different puffins and stuff, but otherwise probably just... Cape York and somewhere with princess parrots in the desert somewhere. <laughs> so Australia, but uh, I'm very similar to, I actually would love to go to Alaska and do the um, shorebirds and breeding plumage yeah. and some, some of the ducks and stuff. That they could get be it. another could video. Be a trip. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone want to meet, meet us in Alaska? But uh, I think Costa Rica and some of those areas would be interesting as well. But because I like my shorebirds, I'd just love to go up there and see yeah. what that's like. And those ducks. Yeah, the ducks are pretty amazing for sure. So Wayne Ashton's just asked um, if we got to restart your YouTube channel or maybe just what have you learnt, I guess, very quickly in your YouTube channel that um, you didn't know at the start but you know now? That good audio matters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I certainly thought for a while it doesn't matter as much but now I can't stand it anymore. If it, I guess it's just a learning curve, right? Mm -hmm. You just start out and you don't know anything about videos mm -hmm. so you have to get to a level where it's acceptable and then you just learn more and more i can't even stand watching my own videos to at least the first few i'm yeah. like oh my god i want to redo them but anyways i think people still get got what i try to say and then yeah. the quality improves over time obviously but yeah for sure i don't think i would necessarily do anything differently i think it seems like at least I've connected very well with people and could mm -hmm. contribute to a lot of people taking better images. And that's really one of the nice things to hear, I think, for yeah, both 100%. of us, that we really help people create better, sharper, nicer images. So that has been really good and really rewarding. For me, it's been a bit of a journey. Like, it's it's nice to have that growth because with anything you learn, like when we started taking photos of birds, they were terrible. Mine were terrible. And, Anyone's, and, I think. <laughs> and as you do anything more, you get better and better, and YouTube's exactly the same. So I'm improving all the time, and I will continue to improve because video is not really my thing. But, you know, I enjoy the process. So it's a nice creative. Uh, for, for me, you know, my uh, interest in photography, you know, peaked and then it started waning and it sort of goes. But YouTube has almost reinvigorated my love of photography because it's giving me another reason to go out there and there's a story to go with the photos. Yeah. You learn too. Like when I've done a lot of these settings videos and other videos, I'm learning at the same time. I don't Absolutely. know everything. You know, I'm not really a techie person. I just take photos of birds and enjoy it. So, you know, it's definitely helped me learn a lot of things as well which is good. So. I actually find it more rewarding in a way because if I go on a trip now, I can not only get the photos, but I can get videos. Mm. I can make a YouTube video. So I get a lot more out of each trip that I make. So yep. it's very nice and it's just a different way of sharing things. And it's quite a nice feeling once you put in all the work and then you hit that upload button <laughs> after all these hours and yeah. then you get it out there. So yeah. it's, it's pretty nice. And yeah, yeah, sure. It's been a great experience of all. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> okay, so just for waterbirds, uh, so Taiwan is moving, is asked, for waterbirds, if they get spooked as you approach the water source, do you generally lay down and conceal yourself and just wait for them to come back? How long do you wait? Um, waterbirds is a tricky one because there's a big difference from wild waterbirds and ones that are a little bit tamer. I was just going to say that okay. because I typically would try and find a spot where the birds are a bit more accustomed to people. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, for most birds, this spot exists. Mm. For instance, in Victoria, there's a lot of duck hunting going on in this state, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's pink eared ducks and you could probably not get within a hundred meters of them. Shell ducks as well. Yeah. Shell ducks, any sort of duck here really, unless mm -hmm. it's a really tame sort of black duck at a pond. But any of the cooler kind of ducks flies away from you when it spots you from hundreds of meters yeah. away. You can fly over to Perth and they're in the middle of the city in a little pond just paddling in front of you in beautiful blue water. <laughs> so I sometimes decide I prefer to look or go after birds that I know I can get nice photos of mm -hmm. than sometimes chasing something or chasing the impossible at times. But back to the question, I think ideally you would probably go there in the dark when the birds can't really see you mm -hmm. and lie down before the birds even come in. Like blind or something. If yeah. you spook 50 ducks, yeah. I don't think they're going to come back. Yeah, it takes some time for sure. Yeah, I, I've had a few attempts at more wild ducks and I've done exactly what you say. I've get there early, put the blind on 
eventually one or two will come, but they spook easily, or they did with before um, Silent Shutter. Yeah. But, you know, as soon as you hit the shutter, they'd be going, what, what's that? And then they'd be set off by something. So, yeah. All right. I get asked a lot. So I'm sure you do as well, but I, I get asked to test all sorts of gear. So subscribers say, um, "Can have you tried out this lens? Have you tried this lens? Have you tried this camera? I think people think that we can just get whatever gear that we want. How hard is it to get gear to test? You'd think it would be easy, but I think there's a lot of people asking for gear, so it has become quite difficult mm. for the companies to figure out who's worthwhile giving the gear to. Mm -hmm. So I think of all, it seems like a lot of the companies have become quite reluctant in just handing out gear, which is understandable, mm -hmm. but also makes it hard for people who want to do real honest reviews that help other people. Yeah, so sure. it has been a challenge to get gear to review. So if anyone has any good contacts, let us know for sure. But it would be very interesting, though, to have a bit more access to other gear but yeah it's definitely a challenge to get yeah, in i mean i've reached out to a, a lot of companies and um just because i'd like to test a few things and i think tamron's the only one that's actually sent me <laughs> anything so thanks to them but uh yeah i'd love to test the sun i'd even like to test the olympus like a lot of people <laughs> a lot, i get a lot of people commenting on how they enjoy their olympus so i'd love to try that i guess one final question and that's just from me to you when did you um, become so uh, persistent? Where does your drive come from? You've got this um, ability to just keep going and get the best <laughs> shot and you just want, you know, you, there's something about your workflow and your personality that you just want the best and you get it. How do, have you always been like that or is it developed over time? I think so. You probably remember when I dragged you through that gang gang <laughs> yeah. park all day. I'm so tired. <laughs> so... Well, I don't like giving up, I suppose. As long as I think there's a chance of getting it, I'll try to get However it. However small. However small. <laughs> but we got it. <laughs> we did. <laughs> so, and this would be a good example because we got nothing all day pretty yeah, much. And then yeah. we had the most amazing we 10 did. minutes or something at mm -hmm. the end of the day. So I think I've always been quite persistent and I always know exactly what kind of image I want, I think, mm -hmm. so I can actually look for that or I know or it's like a feeling that I get when I know I got the shot, basically, because I don't do it for money or to be famous or anything else. I just enjoy taking bird mm -hmm. photos. And recently I also enjoyed just teaching other people how to take nice bird photos. Mm -hmm. So I used to be a lot more sort of secretive about it, but now yeah. I feel like hanging out with you and doing other things, it's just a lot more fun than mm -hmm. just being out by myself and not sharing anything 100 percent. i've seen it first and i've enjoyed the uh benefits from it because i've got some of the good photos when i've been out with you so no really enjoyable well i think that pretty much wraps up all the questions thank you to those that send in the questions i apologize if i didn't answer the ones that you sent in um thank you yeah, for, yeah it was great to be yeah, here hook up in this hotel <laughs> hopefully we that can actually get it a bit strange oh, yeah, okay <laughs> <laughs> hopefully we can um go and take some photos of some birds soon yes we, we would like to but the weather was just no good so we'll see what happens but uh thanks for watching if you enjoyed this content obviously give it a thumbs up subscribe subscribe to yarn's channel if you haven't already <laughs> and uh, we'll see you in the next one so take care see you bye later. <laughs> thanks for that help your audience you don't want to just create content to show yourself off basically like oh i'm just walking through the field i'm so cool with my big lens no you actually want you're to... not cool when you i am but oh, okay. <laughs> i mean you just want to create content for people